Oh, yes, sir. If you want to send a nigga something, send it. I'm going to say it. Oh, God. Oh, hey. My mom, I was just really sitting there thinking about some shit. So today, today going to be one of them down days for me. I'm down. Right? I'm down. I'm going to tell you why I'm down. I'm down because I don't really understand how niggas be weak. <laughs> hey. All right. Look, no, oh, I'm, I ain't really down. I'm just fucking with y'all. You know, I'm very good with starting off full narratives. So, <laughs> I got to start off the narrative. I'm going to start off the narrative. Hey, I was just really just laying here thinking about, like, when did being weak become, like, a motive No, oh, like, I was in the studio with some people last night, and the nigga gonna tell me, yeah, you know, I don't, I, like, I don't really do what y'all do, like, you know, like, I, that ain't really me. I said, what you, what you saying, big dog? He was like, you know, y'all like, y'all like lyricists and things, and, you know, I just... You know, I said, wait, what you saying? Like, you know, I, I like, you know, like, I said, all right, man, hey, cut the beat on, dog, let me hear something. Oh, God, spit a 16 or something. My man start the verse all with, yeah, hey, yeah. I said, oh, no, oh, you one of them. Oh, God, you one of them. All right, cool. <laughs> he start the verse off with, Oh, uh, yeah, oh, uh, yeah, yeah. I said, oh, oh, you one of them. Oh, okay. I see what you on, G. So you just... You just accept it being weak, and that's what you're running with, uh, that's it. You talking about, you know, it's just, it's just what I do. I said, no, my nigga. I'm about to get up now. I said, my no, nigga, that's not what you do. That ain't what you do on God. That's not what you do. Stop saying that's what you do, bitch. You settling. And that's why I want to tell y'all niggas, as if you're going to proclaim yourself being a rapper, stop settling, bro. I'm up. My mama, if you really going to start claiming to be a rapper, stop settling. Stop compromising. You don't have to compromise for nothing. I remember when we all started rapping, nigga, we was trying to be the best ever. That was the objective. You get behind the mic, your objective is to be the best you can possibly be. When the fuck did we as black people start settling with the lowest forms of ourselves? Nah, fuck that. This goes to all the artists, my nigga. 
I don't want to hear that this is what I like to do because, no, nah, nigga, you settling. You trying to do what work to higher your chances of making it. Little do you know you shortening your own fucking rapper lifespan. You think you're going to make it, you're going to shorten your rapper lifespan. Look at these niggas. They come and go every five seconds. Fuck all of that, my nigga. But on the flip side, though, this Heroes video is going to be fire, though. You feel me? Boy. Ooh. Boy, y'all see this shit? You gonna be like, God damn, this nigga light. God, this cold. Oh, let me close this real quick. Oh, nigga can see. Oh, this so cold. Oh no, I ain't even gonna I ain't even gonna get y'all, you know what? I ain't even gonna get y'all nothing nope. Nope. That's all you get, big dog. Sheesh. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god, this video gonna be wild. It's gonna be wild, 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 flip side for the people that really fuck with me and the really niggas that really been following me for a long time right the niggas that really 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 been following me for a long time I realized something I show y'all a lot of shit that I don't ever put out a lot of reasons why I don't put a lot of this shit out. I don't put it out because there's a time and a place for everything. Sometimes you gotta let the world grow first. I feel like the world is growing. People are growing. And you do a lot of things too early and the world not ready for it yet, then it's gonna fall on deaf ears. So I don't put a lot of things out because I don't want to fall on deaf ears yet. I feel like where I'm at musically, people got to grow. And I feel like the more and more I do these lives, the more and more I do what I do, and the more and more people start doing what they're doing, a shift is happening right now. There's a lot of shifts. It's a big shift that's happening. It's just average. Average consumer. Like, I never thought I would see Drake get booed. Never. I never imagined that. Ever. I never thought, I never in my life thought I would see Drake get booed. Ever. Like, especially right now. I never thought that. I never imagined it. But I just think people are tired. I just think people are tired. I think fans, I think just overall groups of people are just tired of being lied to. No, it's not it's not that. People are just being tired. 
They're tired of the fakeness, bro. People are getting tired. Change is coming, bro. That was a staple in hip hop. Change is coming. I keep telling y'all that. Change is coming. Where you can no longer get on stage and rap some bullshit. It's coming. People are starting to wake the fuck up. It's happening. Right in front of our eyes. It's happening. Look. It's happening. Right in front of our eyes. It's happening. You know what's crazy about Drake? Drake is a rapper rapper too. Like we gotta think like before Drake start really making the big records, he was like going after that I'm the best rapper alive shit. So I feel like he gonna have to go back to that. He better hurry up and go back to that before it's too late. He's gonna have to drop a track where he literally demolishing that bitch. Cause niggas tired. I'm just saying, people getting tired. A lot of people getting tired. A lot of people are getting tired. Fans are getting tired. Right? So, that's why I was saying, right, with the game, I just posted this on Twitter. I said, the game, I'm excited to hear the game's new album. One of the reasons why I'm excited to hear the game's new album, because since Nip died, the game has been posting Nip and how important Nipsey was to Los Angeles and how important he was as a figure. So I feel like if Game been posting Nip that much and he want Nip to be acknowledged, then he should follow in Nip footsteps. And he should most definitely make music that will continue the marathon. So I feel like the Game has a, he has the platform, he has the voice. He has the voice, he has the platform. The Game can really switch the whole rap game up with this next problem. The next album, the game could really switch the rap game up. He could actually take music back to actually what it means to rap about something. If he does this on his next project, I promise you, the entire hip hop will change. The game has it. He has an option to literally shift the whole spectrum of hip hop with his next album. All he had to do is make music that matters. Not that matters to the regular niggas. And if the game is watching this, anybody get this back to the game, you know what I'm talking about, game. You know what LA on. You know what hoods that certain niggas beef with. You know you know the shit. You know the smoke that's happening out here that don't make the media coverage. Niggas still think boys in the hood and all that shit. You know the smoke. All you got to do, dog, is make peace. Drop some peaceful records. We need some shit like Nas, I Know I Can. We need some UNITY, Queen Latifah type records. We need some I'm Black and I'm Proud, uh, James Brown type records. We need some motherfucking motivation type records. We need some records where it's telling people love thyself. We need some energy type records. Keep your energy high. We need some motherfucking, we need them. No, look. I'm saying this because if it don't do that, if the records are not like that, that will be the end. People are going to say, oh, here we go, another one of these. Look. Making music about absolutely nothing is played out. We heard about the cars, we heard about the bitches, we heard about the money, we heard about the house, we heard about the mansions, we heard about all the dope stories, we heard about all the times you shot somebody, we heard about the struggle, we heard about it all that we heard about it every we hear it over and over every day the same the content is the same over and over every album 
it's the same. We heard about the hood, the typical hood stories. It's the same. It been like that. Niggas been rapping the same shit for the past 20 years. It's the same. We heard it. It's time. This goes to all the rappers. It's time. It's time to take rap back to what it was for. Use your voice to spread a message. The game got an opportunity to change the whole world right now. He has an opportunity, bro. And Chuck, if you listening to me right now, look, Chuck, go get with Dot, get with Absol, get with Nas, get with Jay, you feel me, or whoever. Get with the right, get with Pete Rock. Go surround yourself by people who really want to push better for the world. Go get with uh, Chuck D. Go get with you feel me. Get with all the KRS One on oh, God. If we see a if we see the game in KRS One type of record, my nigga, that's a that's different. Oh, if the game drop a record called Old School New School and it's the game in KRS One and they you know going back and forth on because game a lyricist don't ever take nothing away from game. He a lyricist. On guy, if we get a game in KRS One track on the intro called the old game, the new game, and they just back and forth, tell them where the game is wrong, what's the game? Wrong with KRS, drop knowledge, what's the game? Drop knowledge, what's the game? Drop knowledge, Drop knowledge, what's the game? 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 Drop That'd be hard. So, like I said, I feel like the game got an option right now. Because a lot of people waiting. We all waiting, especially all the niggas from L.A. Everybody waiting. Everybody waiting. We want to see. And the world is waiting because the game, no matter how y'all feel about the game, he's still one of the biggest rappers on the face of the earth. And at one point in time, he was the biggest rapper in the world. Actually, for a couple of years, he was the biggest rapper in the world. So... I feel like he got he got opportunity right now. He got opportunity right now to make a big shift in the hip hop community. No, game ain't gonna lose fans. My nigga, they just booed Drake. People tired. Want me to tell you why rappers fall off? I'm gonna tell you why rappers fall off. Rappers fall off because they don't evolve, and then when they get to a certain level of hit making, they get industry they get industry wash where they just making radio records, right? So when they start making radio records over and over, yeah, the fans gonna lie to you, man. These white fans gonna trick you. They gonna lie. Yeah, we like that. Yeah, yeah, we like that. Keep making those. On oh, God, you gonna make about twenty in a row, and on the thirty of one, on oh, God, then boo. We don't like that no more. And you washed up. Oh, God, they going to spit you out. So, look, you got to always make music with some type of logic to it. Tyler evolved. On oh, Tyler evolved, evolved. You got to make music with some logic to it. You, well, not logic, because logic trash. But you got to make some logical music. You got to make actual music with some logic to it, bro. And not only that. Like I said, we are going through an uh, era shift. We're going through a cycle. The rap game changed every so many years. It's like a polar shift or some shit. You got to switch it up, bro. You got to switch it up. You got to switch it up. You have to switch it up. Especially when you are a mainstream artist. Now, this is the thing, right? Nine times out of ten, when a rapper lose fans for speaking real shit, he didn't lose fans. He actually lost the people that he shouldn't have never had in the first place. So, look, if you rap about some bullshit and you go multi-platinum, and then you rap about some real shit and you go gold, you should be able to settle with that gold, my nigga, because that's a, that's a million some niggas. In, well, I don't even know what gold is in the, in the industry standard today. 
But if you go gold and you sell a nigga, you sell a hundred thousand copies or whatever gold, that hundred thousand people is worth way more than that platinum. It's worth way more. It's more potent. So so as rappers, especially industry niggas, niggas got to get out of that game that they stuck in where they like, I need to sell this many amount of records so I could be looked at like this. No. Fuck all that. You got to be willing to make that sacrifice for the greater. And I feel like if you make that sacrifice for the greater, you're going to forever have a different type of career to where they don't ever say you washed up. You gotta, you gotta say fuck the majority. You gotta say fuck the majority and literally start getting your coat. Not dick riders, not stands, not fans. You gotta start getting a coat, and that coat has to be based on our, our ethnicity becoming a better race, and that in itself, right? That's why I fuck with Jay Z, what Jay did with four four four. Right, Jay was like, you know what? This look, this is why Jay is timeless. Jay is timeless because Jay music resonates differently than most because he's always really trying to. He tries to show you the ropes, and as he grows, look, Jay, as old as he is, he's growing with his music. He's becoming an adult, like more and more with his music. He's becoming an adult more and more with his music. So 444, like when you think Magna Carta, a lot of y'all don't even know what the Magna Carta is. Y'all ain't even understand the album cover, nothing. Y'all just, it didn't resonate with y'all. So when you go from Magna Carta, you understand what Magna Carta is. Then you go into 444, you understand what 444 is. You understand what he was trying to say. You understand what he was trying to do. You understand why he's with Beyonce. You see what Beyonce did. The man is really, really trying to do something. I'm excited to see what Jay's going to do next. I heard Davey's album. Eh, 5 out of 10. Uh, meh, 5 out of 10. Nothing spectacular, nothing special. But I don't expect nothing spectacular from Davey's. I, don't, I never expect nothing spectacular from Davey's. I don't think... I don't. I mean, it's not... I don't. I don't expect nothing spectacular from Davies. Davies is like, he like a dope New York nigga that lived in like the early 2000s. You know how niggas like the one, two, three, four bar rapper? It's Davies to me. I don't, I don't really see, like I don't really, see, I don't expect him to have a, oh my God, that's a, I can't, I can't, I gotta, I gotta keep rewinding it. I don't expect that. Five out of five. But going back to what I was saying, right? Um, the music aspect is changing. Jay really was kicking some shit on his last album, and he really was telling niggas what it was. I I feel like that's the ultimate sacrifice for a new life. You got to really, really, really demolish yourself in order to continue to be in this world. So what Jay did was Jay was like, all right, y'all, I'm sorry for telling y'all to do this. I did shit wrong. I spent my money wrong. I should have bought these buildings. I should have did this. I should have invested my money into this. I should have did this. This wasn't the right way. I was wild and I shouldn't have been fucking all these bitches. Da -da 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 Jay, and for that. For Jay to be able to sacrifice his own self and his old way of living to still be relevant in the future album, it's amazing. I feel like the game has to do that. The game has to sacrifice itself. He has to really sacrifice what we know of him in order to sustain. He going to sustain the game forever, but in, in order to sustain... 
a new career or not even a new career. Cause I don't even know if he want to rap still after this, but we rappers, you're going to always want to rap my nigga. So if you want to keep going, you want to be on like a J level to where you don't ever, ever get old. You're going to have to, you're going to have to turn, you're going to have to demolish yourself. You're going to have to crash the building and rebuild. So you're going to have to tell niggas I was wrong for this. My attitude was fucked up. I did this the wrong way. I did that the wrong way. If I would have never did this, blah, 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 da, 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 da. This is what I'm on now. I'm on growing. I'm on spirituality. I'm eating healthy. I'm I'm living right. My body right. He going to have to be going to have to become Dr. Sebi. Damn near. Oh, God. Man, if you see a track of the, the game featuring Dr. Savior, I'm gonna be that's gonna be hard. Man, look, I think about stuff like that. I think about being a manager. I think about being a PR. I think about being all type of stuff. Man, I got a lot of, I got a lot of ways that people should maneuver. I got a lot of ideas about how people should maneuver. Um. My thing is, like, I always see the future, man, as one thing that I've been blessed with. I've been blessed with to understand the curve. It's a gift that I have. I understand the curve. And not that I understand it, but when I see something, I could, like, see ahead. Like, like if I see, like, for example, right, it's just like this. If you see a chair and the chair got a screw missing, but the chair holding up, but the screw is missing. Eventually, the chair is going to break. The average person in the world be like, they don't even pay attention to the screw. They just like, nigga, they don't even look at the chair in that aspect. They just see a chair holding up and it's stable enough to sit on it. So they just going to keep sitting on it until it break. I'm one of the few people that just see the screw miss. I'm like, okay, that shit going to break. I already know I need to be getting another chair. Right, it's most definitely a point guard vision. So that's kind of how I maneuver through life. Like when I see things on the internet, I see I'm like, okay, this this is going that way. I need to hurry up and be ahead of that curve. I need to do that. I need to do that because this is going that way, that going that way, and I know this going fall on that whatever. Like I'm one of the niggas like this. Let me tell you what type of nigga I am. Remember the movie The Titanic, right? Remember when they first hit the iceberg? Remember, and. Niggas was like, okay, something ain't right, but we just gonna continue to just go on with life. My nigga, when we first hit the iceberg on God, I would have went straight to the boat thing and got me a little, little, little raft or something. On God, to tuck my raft in the back. I'm gonna put my raft over there. God, I already know some bullshit about to happen. That would have been me. I would have had my raft and life on God ready ASAP. That's me. I, I when I when I see the thing happening, and I'm out of here early. I'm out of here early, gone. I'm not waiting no time to the boat crashing and all that, and try to panic. Oh God, I'm getting off ASAP. They talking about damn daylight. Why you get off the boat, man? Ain't nothing happened, man. Yeah, I shit. I thought it was. Nigga, oh God, I felt some jittery things, man. I got up out of there. Oh, God, I feel the boat going too awkwardly, and then I'm off that bitch. Life jacket right off the boat. Oh, God, I'm out of here. I'm not about to wait. Wait to the end and see what that means. I'm out of here. She. Right? That's me. Right? I take precautions with things early. All right, let me go over there and figure this shit out ASAP, because I ain't about to be a little way behind the thing. Like, on my mama, you know what bothers me the most? You know all this, like, yeah, and auto-tune shit? Do you know I blew up on MySpace for doing this type of shit? All this auto-tune singing and, like, really rapping and auto-tune. I was doing this shit back on MySpace before, it was, before anybody was doing it. Back on MySpace. I was doing auto tune shit back on mine. It's like 05, 04. There was a little Roger Trout shit. Oh God, I was doing this shit way back 04. I seen it. I was like, you know what? This shit gonna become a thing. I was lit on my thousands of plays, hundred thousand, millions of plays. I was lit. This shit, this a thing. 
Mama, I just seen the curve. I always see the curve. But bigger than that, right? This goes to all the artists out there, right? This goes to all the artists out there. Music with content. Music with content is finna matter again. So that's old school rap, right? That's old school. So rapping like that in today's time, it won't work. Nah, this X Clan. If you don't know who X Clan is, you need to go get a bar of X Clan. This goes dog. Look, if you don't know who X Clan is, you need to go get a big bar of X Clan ASAP. So look, rapping in that format, it ain't going to work in today's times because the fans' minds have been altered to modern style rap. So we have to use this same content from back then. Like, you know how you sample shit? You know how you sample beats from back then and they resonate? You got to sample this type of content from back then so it resonate with the modern fans. So these are the things we need to be talking about. You heard what my man said, eating off the land, fruit, all the man, this is shit nigga need to be talking about. Nigga don't need to be talking about no Lambos and Bugattis and nigga how much you spent on the Rolls Royce and your house cost it and your chain, all that's bullshit. I'm keeping it real, all that's bullshit. Niggas need to start really rapping about shit that matters. So we got to go back and listen to these type niggas and take some of this information and take some of these ideas from these type of rappers and bring that shit back. I want to go left field. So the thing is, when we see records like this, and when we do stuff like this, and when I post stuff like this, I know it kind of like tingles something in some of my non-black fans, and they go, well, I, I want to like that, but like, they're talking about white people. So what I do want to say is, if you are a non-black person, don't be offended when somebody black say something about a non-black person. Don't feel no type of way. If anything, if you want to be a better person on this earth, and if you even have a heart to be a better person, you should agree with shit like this. You should go, you're right. You're fucking right. We did do some fucked up shit. We did some fucked up shit, and I'm not with that fucked up shit. You should actually stand for something. It's the truth. You should actually stand for something. You should go, you right. They fucking right. We did some fucked up shit, and I'm not going to be a part of the fucked up shit no more, and I'm going to stand against the motherfuckers. But I notice, you know, when whenever black people say the word white or anything, like, you know, it's normally, oh, my God, they're against us, and then I can't support that because it's going against my people. Uh, no, bro. Niggas ain't saying nothing wrong. Niggas ain't said I want to kill nobody. You ain't hear them in here say they want to kill nobody. You see all this Black Panther shit, and you think like you think like Black Panther niggas hate white people. No, we don't hate 
Black Panther people, white people, black people don't hate white people. Black Panthers didn't hate white people. You never seen Black Panthers just out hunting white people. No, the shit is created for protection. That's it. It's just a protection group. It's not a hate group. When somebody say, I'm black and I'm proud and I want to be black or whatever, it's not a hate group. It's just, bro, it's protection. It's all it is. like our form of police. Like, uh, chill. So, all these people are doing is trying to tell the future black people what happened in the past and how we need to maneuver so we don't forget, so we don't lose our natural way of living. If you are a non-black person that are that want to do right in the grand scheme of life, you should agree with stuff like this. You should say, okay, yeah, you're right. And then you should say, all right, well, fuck the other niggas. I'm down for the niggas. And for that reason is why I tell all my non-white friends, the dog, and a lot of people, look, a lot of people, especially like people that don't really follow me, but that tune in to certain things that I say, a lot of people will, they, they think, or they'll say things like, yo, man, they like, like, he always talk about black stuff and, you know, he might be racist. My dog, I, my house has been open to many, I got many white homeboys that come to my house daily. My door is open to all of them whenever they want to pull up. Any one of my white friends that you can meet, they'll tell you, you know, they is the coolest nigga. I go to the house. I'm eating all type of bullshit, steak, well done, and all that, man. Have the medium rares. Oh, God, I go eat the medium rares with the homies at least once. Oh, God, nigga be sick as a dog a couple of weeks later. But still, oh, my white boys pull up. All my white boys pull up. Uh, so look, my thing is like, I just, I hang with people who stand for better. I don't really care what race you are. I don't care if you're black, Mexican, white, green, blue, red, whatever. I hang with people who stand for better and people who want to push for better. If you really want to push for better as an individual, as yourself, that's two, it's two ways, right? It's two ways that I fuck with you. I fuck with you if you want to be a better person. Like, I'm talking about just a better person. Like, that don't mean, like, that don't mean, like, that don't mean you should stop doing, like, things that you like to do. I'm just saying you just got to be more responsible. You got to think better. You got to eat healthy. You feel me? I don't really hang with people who really do super drugs like that. A few of my homeboys smoke, but, like, I don't really hang with niggas with super, super drugs like that. And the niggas that I do hang with, like, so I got, I got circles. So the niggas that I fuck with is in my close, close circle. I'm talking about, like, if I'm hanging with you every single day, you can't smoke or drink. That's just it. That's just, that's a, that's a rule that I have. If you in my immediate circle, you can't smoke or drink in my immediate circle. Like, I'm talking about, if I'm going to fuck with you on an everyday basis, we finna be driving and maneuvering and all that, you can't smoke or drink. That's it. The second circle is, like, my niggas circle. Like, them my niggas, all right? So the second circle, like, you know, that's my niggas that do music, my niggas that rap, you know, and niggas that produce. Okay, them niggas, they might smoke a little weed every blue moon, whatever, whatever, right? So my niggas smoke weed, my niggas chill, you feel me? Um... Um, you know, and I am, you know, I pull up niggas be smoking in the studio or some whatever, whatever, and that's what they do. You feel me? They need to do what they do to get their creative. All right, cool. That's cool. I pull up. I ain't gonna never down for you. No. So those two ways to be cool. Now, the other thing is what type of person you are, right? You got to be a nigga willing to push for better. You got to be a nigga willing to push for better. If you're not willing to push for better, I don't care I don't care if you, whatever, you just got to be a, a person that's willing to push for better and a person that is not compromising for this reality. And I've gained a lot of new friends and lost a lot of old friends for this method. And one of the reasons why I live life like this now is because your circle is important and how the people in your circle maneuver is extremely important. And like I tell you all the time, energy can be transferred through multiple ways. 
So if you notice, and it's just the people that have been following me for a long time, most people notice like I've had circles of people and then you don't see these people no more. When you don't see people no more, if you see me fucking with niggas a lot and when you don't see them no more, nine times out of ten, like, they fail. They fail. And when they fall, I just, all right, we'll go do your thing, right? But whenever I do have my circles of friends and you see me in groups with my groups of friends, what do we do all day? Laugh. All day we are laughing. We are clowning, shooting jokes, or creating jokes all day. I understand how important laughter is, and laughter, as long as you happy, you high. As long as you happy, you'll be high. Being happy is a high. People don't understand that. Being happy is a high. That shit it release all type of dopamines and all type of shit inside your body. So whenever whenever I'm around somebody and I'm in somebody immediate circle, somebody in my immediate circle. All we do is shoot jokes all day, all day. That's all we do is laugh. Laugh, 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 laugh. All is all jokes. So, like I said, I'm where I'm at right now. Where I'm on right now, I'm building a team. I've tried to build teams normally a lot. I most definitely build a team. I go through people over and over. Like I said, my doors is open to a lot of people. I've never told no nigga no. I've never told one of my homies you can't pull up. My phone number been the same. My phone number been the same since I was 19, 18. If you got my phone number, you know my shit been the same since it was since I was 18. 818 number been the same since I was 18. The team that I'm trying to build is kind of in the form like how I was talking about the RV and shit. The team that I'm trying to build, bro, like it's bigger than music. It's bigger than it's bigger than music. It's bigger than all of that shit. Like it's bigger than all of that shit. It's bigger than it's bigger than it's bigger than music. Like, like I tried to build a team once, so I got all my niggas. Listen to me, I got all my niggas that I was cool with. And we drove twenty something hours in the van together. This was the first time I got the idea for the RV shit. We rented a van. We drove twenty something hours to Texas together. It was me and my niggas. Oh God, let me tell you what type of nigga I am. I got a hotel. Oh God, just one bedroom with six, six grown ass men. Oh God, I got a hotel, my hotel. I didn't even sleep in my own bed, oh God. And when I did sleep in my own bed, it was about, nigga, we was huddled up in that bitch. Pause. But nigga, hey, we in here, my nigga. Oh God, you better feet to toe, nigga. Lay your ass down that way like we did when we was kids, oh God. You, if your feet stink, oh God, go wash them. My nigga, we had fun on the road, dog. We stopping at gas stations. Oh, God, we filming. We getting out. We we stopped at a gas station. Had the Hills Have Eyes people out there. They almost killed us. Oh, God, get them, Tommy. Man, we had fun. This the type of shit I be on, bro. I made sure my niggas had an experience like no other. Tell him those K those in the building. He part of the squad. Those pulled up. We went out there deep. Oh God, six of us. We out. Have fun, dummy fun. That's the things that I'm trying to do, man. That's why I was saying with this RV shit, like, bro. With this RV shit, y'all don't understand what it feel like to be on the road with somebody that long. And a group of niggas having fun on the road like that. That shit is amazing. It's the greatest feeling in the world. Like, because you got so many stories that you can't. My nigga, we look. We were six deep in the van. We almost ran out of gas, so we had to get off an exit. On God. 
the exit was Iran, Texas. Have you ever heard of Iran, Texas? Iran. On God, you make a left. You go deep behind the mountains. This is a town of about 400 people. It's a town behind the mountains of about 400 white people. Now, you know me. I'm always, look, go Google it. Iran, Texas. It's in the middle of nowhere. On God, it's a chainsaw massacre type of town. I swear to God. So we get off on God. I'm telling them, man, I think we could just make it to L.A. Because I don't know if we should be stopping around here. You know me. Man, they like, man, it's going to be cool. Uh, we get off. Look, we get off. We pull up to the gas station. But, no, before, look, I swear on my son's life, I'm not. Normally, I sugarcoat just to make the story funny. But today, I'm not sugarcoat nothing. I'm going to tell a nigga word for word exactly what happened. We pull up. As we turn into the city, it was three little girls running all holding hands with the little little house on the prairie dresses on three little blonde hair blue eyed white girls running like da, da, da. and they was like jogging in slow mo oh god I looked at those and steezily I said yep we dead on my son's life I said we dead it's over it was three little white girls running, holding hands, jogging with the high stockings on, little house on the prairie look. Oh, guys, it's over. It's over. We pull into the gas station. The lady talking about, hi. Oh, God. I said, man, we got to get up out of here. Oh, God. The homie talking about, no, man, we good, man. They ain't tripping. I swear to God. I look outside, I see the nigga with the cowboy boots and the bucket. He talking about, you got it, boy? Oh, I guess he was talking to somebody else, oh God, but we never seen the thing he was talking to. So that led me to think, whoever he was talking to lived in the basement. He was talking to a thing in the basement. Oh God, it was, and you know, you know them white people got a, you know what type of thing they got in the basement. Oh, God. It's going to be all right, boy. One time you're going to come out here and help me with the truck. I said, oh, God. And then, look, I swear to I swear. Oh, Tommy. I said, oh, no. He got to get him, Tommy, in there. Oh, God, he had one of them. You remember the thing from uh, the Goonies? Remember the thing that wanted to snicker? Oh, God, he had one of them in the garage. I said, oh, we got to go, G, before they let the Goonie thing out on us. Oh, God. It was about 4.30, 5 o'clock. I said, it's getting dark, G. We got we to gotta get up out of here. Oh, God. Man, we got to get up. I'm looking at those. Those laughing. He talking about uh, those. This ain't a laughing matter, G. These people eat people around. Hey, my nigga, look. Paw paw. Oh God, when you hear the paw paw, that means it's time to run. Paw paw. Look. Yo, day, you still got the film, huh? Yo, yo, Dole still got the film of the whole thing. He filmed it. Look, it shit like some Blair Witch Project shit. But look, I swear, my nigga, it was only a gas station. Look, hear me out. This what you got to know. It was only a gas station. That's all. They didn't have no grocery stores or nothing. It's only a gas station and a bunch of people. I didn't see no cows, no cattle, no goats or nothing. What they eat? All right. <laughs> oh, God. They wait for niggas to pull up. They go for the... <laughs> Man, I didn't see no food, no grocery stores, no nothing. No cattle, no sheep, no farm, no nothing. Oh, yeah, they just had a gas station in the middle of the town. Oh, God, they eaters. Oh, God, you remember the Temecula Timmy. Oh, God, you remember the Temecula. The secret, hey, niggas know. Wrong turn. Oh, God, man. 
Google it. It's called Iran, Texas. That man, hold on, nigga, think I'm lying. <laughs> hold on, Google. Population is a thousand people. Man, how you got a city with only a thing? What type of freaking shit, y'all? Oh, gee. oh, God. Oh, my. The Texas chain. <gasps> I'm done. Bruh, we was in Texas, for real. We really turned at the Texas Chainsaw Massacre thing. Yo. We was really in the real Texas Chainsaw Massacre thing, for real, for real. Oh, no. No, G. Oh God! They tried to do. They wanted to do eating. Look, my nigga, you know it's some you, my nigga. Iran, Texas people. Look, they don't never show none of them. Oh God! Look, man, no, not them ones. Those ain't the ones that I seen. Look, they don't. They don't want to show the ones that I seen. Oh God! Look, man, what's this? What's this? I'm telling you, G. They not showing them. Those, you remember the ones I seen. Oh, God, they not showing the things. Damn, they really won't show the people. Man, oh, God. Yo. Oh, my mama, they was like some eating type people. Damn, they don't show none of the people that live there. Oh, God, look at him. You know, oh, my dead granny, rest in peace. He ate a couple of people. Look at this glibly. Oh God, look. Hey. Oh look, my nigga, what's this? Oh God. Oh man, what type of hills that? Oh, I told ass on east side. I told y'all. Oh man, what's this? Oh man, what type of Oh, God, I told y'all, my nigga. Man, this a whole creature out here on us. Sheesh. Oh, my mama, dog, they really been eating niggas out there. Oh, God, look at these niggas. Look. Yeah, yeah, look at that. Mama, what's wrong with these people? What a sad. No, my nigga. Oh God, these are the Texas Chainsaws. My mama, these are the Texas Chainsaw Massacres. Ain't no nigga could tell me different.
Muhammad, they had one of them. Oh, God, he ugly. Oh, mama, look at him. Oh, crap. What's wrong with him? Nuke.